What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. Today we're talking about the forearms and we're gonna construct the perfect forearm workout. And as always here guys, we're using science and anatomy to back up what we do. Because when we, if you wanna put the science back in the strength, it takes one look at the forearms to realize there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of muscles interplaying to create the, the different actions of the forearm. And it's not just about wrist curls and wrist extensions. As a matter of fact, if you're doing your wrist curls like this and your wrist extensions like this, you're actually leaving some gains on the table. I'm gonna show you what you could do to improve those actions. And then of course, we gotta to add to them. Why? Because there's different functions here of the form. You can see that just by creating different movements of the wrist, I can activate different areas of the form itself. If I did this, this is called owner deviation. You can see there's different areas here of the forearm that work to create that. Same thing here if I were to go in the opposite direction, radial deviation, you can see a distinct area of the forearm that actually creates that action. Right? And we can also see that if I involve just my wrist, I get a certain level of activation in the forearm. But if I start to involve the finger flexors, that there's a whole other level of activity that goes on. And if we go here into pronation, you can see that we get a response of a certain area of the forearm. So why are we just focusing on a couple motions when we have to include all of them? I'm gonna make it simple for you though, guys. I'm gonna include all the things we need to do in the right amounts and we're gonna walk you through it step by step, right? So let me take you through each of the exercises and as always in our perfect workouts, guys, I'm gonna give you the sets and reps to do the entire workout at the end. All right, so let's start to construct this perfect forearm workout. And we're gonna start right away with these wrist curls and what to do instead, because I know I probably raised some eyebrows when I said that this wasn't necessarily optimal, doing your curls like this. And there's a reason for that, actually two. The first is that we know that when we start to fatigue, that our bodies are masters of compensation. They're gonna find a way to perform the movement, even if it's not necessarily the way you wanna perform it. So if you start to fatigue and lose the ability to curl your wrist up, guess what happens? Your biceps are in a perfect position here to take over. And it's not necessarily what we're looking for when we're trying to build bigger forearms because the biceps are just trying to raise the bar up to do the job that the forearms can't do. Well, you might say to yourself, well, I've heard that if I go behind my back, I can take the biceps out of it and we can curl and perform these the right way. Not necessarily, guys. As a matter of fact, you might even say too, if I go down here to the bench, which I've seen and I've done tons of these, this is gonna be better too because you can see the biceps are taken out of it here as well, so I'm on the right track. Well, guys, you might be on the right track, but you're on the wrong train because this is not necessarily fixing the bigger issue here. And the bigger issue is what happens in all of these gravity loaded exercises and variations of the forearm curl. We're actually allowing, as we start to fatigue, the bar, and maybe even purposely, allowing the bar to sink down into these distal fingers of ours, all the way down to the distal metacarpals. That is a lot of load as I actually put in an entire video on how that is the number one cause of medial elbow pain that we deal with and it's how we grip the bars, how we grip bars during even rows. But when we do forearm work, it actually gets magnified because we tend to train our forearms more regularly throughout the week, especially if they're a weak point of ours. We've been told we can train them three to four times a week. What we have in all of those variations is this sinking of the bar into these distal fingers here is what's gonna overload and stress that medial elbow, causing medial elbow pain. And even if I do the reverse barbell curl, you can see that I still have the same effect. That bar starts to roll deeper into the fingers as I start to fatigue. So in order to counteract that, guys, there's a better way to do this. And I do this right here with a cable machine. Now you can see immediately, I bent my elbow. I've taken the biceps out of this, right? And I'm now pushing away. And the other thing that's happening here is as I'm pushing away, not only am I getting a, a more intense contraction of the forearm muscles that you will feel the second you try this, you don't have to use a cable either, guys. You can use a band. The fact is, you're in a more intense contraction, and as I push down with my wrist, I'm actually allowing the handle to sink deeper into the palm as opposed to into the fingers. This will take all of the stress off the medial elbow. If you were to do this three to four times a week, it would allow you to train the forearm curling function without having those detriments and those negative side effects that can go right to your elbow, preventing you from even wanting to train your forearms at all. The perfect forearm workout would not be complete without carries, and you're gonna be doing a lot of them. And there's a reason for it, because the forearms are also very much required to have endurance capabilities and have a capacity for being able to grip and hold for a long period of time. Not just because we use them constantly throughout the day, but we also know that if, God forbid, we're ever in a survival situation, we'd wanna be able to hang on and hold on for the duration. So we're gonna train them with a set of carries in between every single exercise we do in this workout today. Walk one lap around, come back around, do another set, and repeat. 
You're gonna be coming back to the carries. We're actually gonna end with the ultimate test of muscle endurance in our forearms, the arm hang. But for now, work your carries in between every set of every exercise you do in this workout. All right guys, let's move on now to the opposite side of the forearm, wrist extension, right? We know it's critical. When we talk about, in the beginning, I said that this isn't necessarily the best way to do it. And there's a reason for it, because we should know by now that when we look at the physics of this, performance of this exercise, we know that when, we, when the hand gets up to the top here into full extension, gravity is actually acting down through the wrist. And there's less force here than there is when gravity is acting perpendicular to the wrist. So we're actually taking tension off of the forearm as we get closer to the top. We can actually fix that though by performing this standing. If we do this standing, the other way we would want to do it is with this opposite roll, right? So what I've done before, I've showed you guys before, I'm actually extending this wrist back on the right side to come up. And you can see that even at its peak into full extension, I'm still now completely perpendicular to the force of gravity, meaning that my forearm here is doing a lot of work to hold this. And then I rotate the opposite side. So I start to go left, right, left, right. Well, what I do is I wanna work this in a ladder style because I have another opportunity here. If I'm in this standing position, I could actually work another muscle of the forearm, the brachioradialis that comes in here into our forearm. So all I have to do to do that is a reverse curl. So I can go to a ladder format. I go one second here of roll and then one rep of a reverse curl. Two seconds of rolls and then two reverse curls. Three seconds of rolls and then three curls. And I try to work my way up to a ladder as high as I can until I reach failure. What do we do next? Of course, pick up those dumbbells, we do our carry all the way around, back to the spot, and we do one more set. All right, next up, now we have radial deviation and ulnar deviation. And for some of you guys, you never even heard those terms, but I'm telling you, for a complete and perfect forearm workout, you need to work on these things, because there's a reason for them. What we're talking about, radial deviation and ulnar deviation, is how the wrist bends in this frontal plane. Okay? It's not just about flexion and extension like we talked about. It's also being able to bend this way. So when we come towards the radius, the top side bone in our forearm here, that's radial deviation. And then when we go down towards the ulna here, the underside bone of our forearm, that's ulnar deviation. You can see when I even do radial deviation here, you see the activity of the muscles of the forearm. So why are we not trying to train that motion? Even though it's small, we need to work on it. And you've probably seen people recommend things that you could do for this before, like using a sledgehammer. And they hold the sledgehammer down at their side, and to work on radial deviation, they lift the weighted part up in this way. Now, what we go is we work on the way back for ulnar deviation. We flip the, uh, the sledgehammer around and we lift back that way. Now, the problem is we don't all have sledgehammers. So what do we do? Well, we can actually do something in the gym with a rope. And all you gotta do is take the rope from here down to here, okay? Take one handle and stand up nice and close. Put your hand down at your side. And now because you can torque your hand off of the bottom here of the rope, we're gonna go down like that. So we go from neutral or even from a little bit radial deviation down into ulnar deviation, just like that. Okay, nice and slow and controlled. You do a set of these, you walk around the gym with your carries, you come back, you do another set, obviously each arm. Then we come back and we rotate around this way. Now when we're here, we take a grip on top from here. Now we wanna work radial deviation. So from here, now we're gonna push with the pinky side of our hand down into that rope to push the weight down and go into radial deviation. You can see each time, push down through the pinky, there, and you get into radial deviation and come back down. So basically this end is facing down towards the ground and then you wanna end with it facing out in front of you. Again guys, we work both sides. We're gonna walk around the gym, as always, with another carry and come back and move on to the next exercise. All right, now supination, pronation, guys, this is not the way to do it. You see people do this all the time. You're really, you're actually falling into pronation here and falling into supination because the weight is actually just spinning your hand. You're not resisting that motion, but we can do that. And once again, you go back to the rope to do this. So now if I wanted to get into pronation here, what I do is I'd hold the rope this way and now I'm gonna use it again this way. I'm pushing my fingers here into the rope to pronate my forearm, just like this. From here, from a supinated position, turn the forearm over, push out with this finger into the rope, and I'm getting that resisted 
pronation now in every single rep. You can see that here on the underside of the forearm as it works, as I go down into pronation from here every rep. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to work this to failure and then of course walk around the gym with your carry. Now you come back and go the other way. If I want to do supination here, what I do is I take my hand out to the side and now I'm going to go and I'm going to try to turn this from a position facing out to back towards the machine. You can see all the forearm supination here that takes place to get that there. Now we know that the bicep is obviously a supinator, okay, but it's not the only one. We've got a supinator muscle in our forearm that you can see working to accomplish this, and that's what we're trying to do. And I'm telling you guys, these muscles aren't ever really trained in a way with resistance, especially if you were doing that dumbbell twirling exercise. So they'll respond pretty quickly to this extra resistance to add size to your forearm. So we want to make sure we do that. All right, guys, almost done. We want to now work those intrinsic hand muscles that I talked about, and then we're going to finish with that one final test, that grueling hanging test to really put the finishing touches on this workout. All right, so now we move on to intrinsic hand strength. And you're probably wondering, well, why does that really matter? I'm talking about my forearm, Jeff. Well, you saw in the very beginning here that activation of our fingers dramatically influences what goes on in our forearm because all of those tendons and muscle bellies run down through the forearms into our fingers. So we want to work that. And the cool thing is you can do it with a collar, right? You probably didn't think, oh, I don't have those old grippers anymore. Yeah, you do. You take one of the collars from the gym and you could do your hand squeezes here, right? Now, what is that doing? Well, it's obviously taking these fingers and moving them from this straight position here into a flex position. So we know we're getting activation in the forearm. But to integrate that, what I like to do is, I like to do sets to failure here, and then once I'm done, back off. Back off the tension, because you're not gonna be able to do this if you hold full tension. You take it just a little bit of tension now, and then I go and I move my wrist into extension and down into flexion, and into extension and flexion. Extension and flexion. Flexion, being able to still hold some tension through here gets very difficult because of active insufficiency. Once I shorten these flexors in my forearm, it gets hard to still maintain force through here. But that's what I'm trying to work on. I'm trying to maintain the, the ability to contract and generate force even in a shortened state. So I have a little bit of tension, I go back and forth into extension at the wrist and flexion until I can't do it anymore. So it's basically a drop set burnout. Go failure on the squeezes and then failure on the back and forth until you can't control it anymore. You're going to do that on each side, again, with your carry in between each one. And one last final grueling test to put the finishing nail in this coffin. Guys, we do the arm hang. You guys know how much of a fan I am of the dead arm hang. What we're doing here is trying to hold on for as long as we can. Now, in a good, in a good situation, fresh, a minute 40 is a, is a good time. It's a good average time. What I'm looking for here is can you hold for one more minute? And obviously, you're going to want to start sliding out. The bar is going to start to slide into your fingers. Try not to let that happen for all the reasons we talked about in the very beginning about not wanting that bar to slide into those distal fingers there because of the stress it puts on the elbow. Really squeeze, really hold, activate the forearms, try to gut it out for one final minute at the end. So guys, there you have it. There is the perfect forearm workout. As you can see here, all the sets, all the reps, all the techniques, it's not meant to be a five minute forearm workout. If you have problematic forearms, if you are suffering because you don't have adequate strength there, if you don't have adequate size, you're gonna need to train them just like any other muscle. And that means that you're gonna have to take ownership of this program and start incorporating it into what you're doing right now. If you're looking for a complete program, guys, that overlooks nothing in our training and it actually lays all these out step by step so that we make sure that you're hitting everything when you're supposed to, all of our programs do that. They're over at athletex.com. In the meantime, guys, if you like this series, Make sure you subscribe to our channel here and turn on your notifications so you never miss one of the videos in this series. And let me know what else you want me to cover. I'll do my best to do that for you in the days and weeks ahead. All right, guys. See you soon.